Moneyball, the fad made popular by the Oakland Athletics and Billy Bean and then repopularized by the dashing Brad Pitt and also dashing Jonah Hill, credit where credit is due, has made its way into the footballing world recently with teams like Brentford not having youth academies as a way to invest their funds more intelligently and now it's in France with a club that is doing what the other clubs around it seem very unable to do. And they're doing it using data analytics to determine everybody from who they should sign to how they should allocate their transfer budget in the first place. And this all involves an aerospace engineer as well, but it just starts with this club. Toulouse. Toulouse is a club that was just promoted from the second division of France to the first, and that happens for three clubs every year. But Toulouse is the only one that is not currently in the relegation zone to go right back down after getting promoted. In fact, if you look at the league on table, Toulouse is actually in 11th, sailing ahead of Ajaccio and Auger. They're doing this while working with a total budget of just 43 million US freedom dollars in a year where PSG is running up a tab of 754 million US freedom dollars. So the key moment for any Moneyball story is how did it start? But before we get any further, we need to clear up what Moneyball is for those that are uninitiated in Brad Pitt's jawline. Now, Moneyball is the idea of using data analytics to drive player acquisition, deciding what you need analytically, and then finding the players that are able to provide it for you. The movie itself was based off a book by Michael Lewis, which was written about the Oakland Athletics, which are an American baseball team that were terrible, small market in Oakland, but ended up making a miraculous run to the playoffs because they used analytics to find players that were being overlooked by traditional scouting methods. For those that don't know what baseball is, essentially, you put this on, you stand here like this, give it a shake, and then you swing. And there are a lot of numbers that come off of that. Not to mention how juiced these arms are. That's what I'm freaking talking about. We use editing to make those look really massive, you know? The underlying idea of the whole thing is that analytics help you see past biases that you hold as a scout, where somebody's from Brazil, so they surely have to have a lot of skill, or somebody is tall, so surely they must be a good, effective aerial presence. Analytics help you find somebody, for example, like Lisandro Martinez, who, even though he's 5'9", is able to be an incredibly effective presence no matter the size of the opponent. And in July 2020, the American investment firm Red Bird Capital Partners purchased the majority stake in Toulouse, and then a point Damian Camoli as the president, the guy to run the whole show. And if that name sounds familiar, that's because he used to be the director of football at Liverpool. The same guy that bought Andy Carroll. And if anything, this is proof that people can change. Because instead of going and spending a ton of money on Andy Carroll, he went out and got himself an aeronautical engineer. Specifically, the head of data, Julien Damu, who became the head of a staff to analyze more than 60 leagues around the world for Toulouse. So this is just one half of the two-headed snake that Toulouse uses to acquire players. They also brought in Brendan McFarland as the head of recruitment, and he's there to better assess things that can't be presented analytically. In that is where I find this story to be even more fascinating than most Moneyball stories. Not that there are a ton of clubs running Moneyball at this level to begin with, there aren't, but to bring in somebody who is able to assess things like personality and technique that are not picked up by the data, that is like hybridizing bastardizing Moneyball in the first place. But I get it. There is a huge difference between Billy Bean's Oakland Athletics and Toulouse in Ligue 1. And that difference is the freaking sport that they're playing. Baseball spits out numbers like you wouldn't believe. War, batting average, on-base percentage, strikeout rate, velocity of the pitch is only part of the equation. What's the spin rate? What's the arm angle of delivery that varies between the different pitches, right? Like there's numbers flying out all over the place. RBIs. What's your batting average with the base? is loaded. What's your batting average with runners on second? You get the idea. There's nothing like that in soccer, in football. The analytics are still in their infancy relatively. They're still being tested out, and so you need somebody like Brendan McFarland to come in and assess a few of the things that the numbers can't distill into buy this player or don't. And if you're wondering who Brendan McFarland is, he was the previous lead scout in France for Brentford, which checks out because Brentford is England's Moneyball club. By the end of 2020, the team was in place in Toulouse in the second division, and immediately they went out and bought third-tier striker Rhys Healy from MK Dons. But in their promotion season, he made 32 appearances and scored 20 goals in the second league of France. 
truly an excellent pickup that almost single-handedly motivated their promotion. But Toulouse wasn't done. Their willingness to dive into second and third divisions of lesser-known leagues and countries to find players that could provide serious value doesn't know any bounds, nor should it. If a player looks good enough analytically, you have to trust they're going to be able to make the move. And that happened again with Bronco Vandenboomen. Now, Vandenboomen was signed also in 2020 and had a huge impact as well, but he's also transitioned wonderfully to Ligue 1 with five goals and seven assists so far in the campaign. And he was playing at De Grafschaft in the second division of the Netherlands two years ago, three years ago. I hate how fast time moves. Toulouse wasn't done making signings either. They signed Thies de Linga from the second division of the Netherlands. They went to freaking Bulgaria to get Steen Spearings. They went to Poland to get Saeed Hamulic. They're pulling players from overlooked locations and overlooked leagues that analytically match up with their ability to perform. And all of a sudden they're on a stage matching up against PSG, only losing two to one and winning comfortably against some solid league on opposition. They even beat my boy Will still three to one in the French Cup round of 16. And if you look at the lineup, you see Dalinga, you see Spearings, you see Vandenboom and these guys that have been pulled up to this level and have exceeded expectations. Well, everybody's expectations except for Toulouse. And I'll take a moment just to respect Damien Camoli's comeback story. He got fired for signing Andy Carroll at Liverpool and now he's engineering a money ball success story in Ligue 1 with one of the smallest budgets in the league. But what to me makes this the most fascinating example of Moneyball in football is the fact that there's that McFarlane influence. There's that other side of it that you need to bring in the personalities to help you succeed as well. Because one facet of Moneyball we didn't touch on in our overly brief explanation of it is the idea that the value of the player dictates everything. If their analytics are good, their value also needs to be good, which usually means young, unrealized players. You aren't just going to build a team out of that, are you? Not when you have the McFarlane influence over here looking for technique and personality. So you sign a player like Chilean left back Gabriel Suaza or signing a player like Brecht Dejigeri, who, look, I know I said, you don't have to tell me, I know I said it wrong. I know I said it wrong, okay? I can't help it. At least I know where Belgium is. That's like better than 90% of the people from my country. All right, I'm doing my best. Now, Mr. Brecht played eight years for Ghent in the top Belgian division. A lot of high-level competitive experience, some European competitive experience. Now at 31 years old, he comes trotting on in and Toulouse. Another player Toulouse signed is Danish center back Rasmus Nikolaisen, who they signed for only 500,000 US dollars. All three of these players came from clubs where they had previously won trophies before joining Toulouse. That's the experience in actually winning trophies. It can make a difference in a size. And the last factor is that un unlike Brentford, they are investing heavily in youth as a way to cheaply produce talented players. They have Anthony Rual, who is one of the best center backs in Ligue 1, honestly, this season. And he has only played for Toulouse. Came up through their academy. Now, that's a free signing. That's excellent value. And it's a different approach to money ball than what Brentford's taking, which is essentially financial efficiency. But now the secret is out. All that's needed is for Toulouse or a team like it in the near future to explode into the top of a league or to win miraculously a cup or a European cup to get everybody's attention to start paying a little more attention to this way of doing business because bringing in an aeronautical engineer to run your data analytics department just uh, the nerds are coming they've already taken baseball because it's a pretty good way to win